Welcome back everybody. This is the first of a few videos that I'll be recording about recursion. And with this being one of the first videos, this will be the basics. So we'll be covering two examples in this video, and if you want to follow along with those, you can get the code at a link in the video description. So what is recursion? Most simply, a recursion is where a function calls itself. And the benefit of this is that you can simply describe or solve more complex problems. That might seem a little abstract, so let's dive into the first example, which will be adding all the numbers in an array. So we have these numbers from 1 to 10. We want to get the sum of all those numbers, which will be 55. I've covered this particular example in a previous video, so if you've already watched this, this might be a bit of retreading, but it never hurts to cover things again if you're not totally comfortable with recursion. So, to start solving things recursively, we need to frame the problem in a recursive way. And the benefit, like I said, of recursion is that you can take a simple solution and use it to solve a more complex problem. So what would our simple solution be for adding up a bunch of numbers? Well, it would be adding two numbers. So let's start by making a function that would just add two numbers together. So we have this function called add. It will take two numbers, add them together. Now it's subtle, but what happens when you add two numbers? You take two inputs and you get one output. And so if we have a list of 10 numbers and we add two of those numbers together, we then have a list of nine numbers. And if we take a list of nine numbers and we add two of them together, we now have a list of eight numbers. Eventually, this would mean that we would get down to a point where we only have two numbers. And two numbers can be handled by add, and that will give us our answer. So, how do we get there? Well, the way to frame this particular problem is that the sum of ten numbers, in this case, is the sum of the first number and the rest of the numbers in the array. So if we had the sum of 2 through 10, which would be 54, we could pass 1 and 54 as arguments into add, and that would give us our answer of 55. So our sum function needs to do that. Now let's start by, excuse me, by assigning some variables for our function. I'm going to use destructuring. I've covered destructuring in previous videos, so if you are unfamiliar with it, check out those videos. I'll just briefly explain what's going on uh, in this example, but not dive too deep into it. We're going to assign the first value in the array to be x, second value to be y, and the rest of the arguments, or the elements in the array, to an uh, array of y's. So this will be initially 1, 2, and then an array of 3 through 10. Now, this a list of numbers could have any number of numbers in it, so let's start with an edge case of no numbers in the array. So if there are no numbers in the, way, in, the, in the array, the easiest way that I can think of to check that is to check if there's no first number. Because if there's no first number, then there's no other numbers. And we need to provide some sort of default value uh, I would say that the value that makes sense here would be 0. And if we have, we've checked for no numbers, now we need to check for one number. And we can check for one number the same way that we checked for no numbers, except that we check for the existence of a second number. So if, there's, if this first clause did not pass, then we know we have at least one number. And if we have no second number, if it's undefined, then we know that we can just return the first number because that's the sum of all the numbers in the array because there's only one number. Otherwise, we need to check for two numbers in the array. <clears throat> and so the way to do that in this case is to check if there are no rest of the numbers. So we have an x, we have a y, but we have no other numbers. So we just have two and we wrote our function add to handle this situation. So we can return add x and y. Now everything up to this point has been fairly straightforward. There's nothing recursive or confusing about this. Now we have to provide that description of our 
solution that hits this line, line 15, which is called the base case. So in recursion, you always have to provide a base case, and this is what will break our recursive loop. But we have not created our recursive loop yet. So that will be in the next clause here. So here, this will be if if this was zero, this was one, this was two arguments in the or elements in the array, this is three or more. So we'll check any number of elements in the array as long as it's more than two. And we'll do that, like I said before, by adding the first element, which I should not write one, I should write x, the first element in the array to the sum of the rest of the elements. And this describes the problem that we're trying to solve. So when sum of the rest of the elements is evaluated, this will become 54, x is 1, and so if we add them, we will get our, the answer to our problem, which is 55. There we go. So if that confuses you, if you were not expecting it to be 55 because you think this makes no freaking sense at all, let's take a look at how this is actually working. And <clears throat> this works because of the way that JavaScript evaluates line 17. In order to call add, it needs to have a value as the second argument. It can't have a function that is still being evaluated, which means that sum needs to return a value before add can be called. And when we call sum, we're calling it with all the numbers from 2 through 10. So the next time we get through this sum call, x will be 2, y will be 3, and this will be all the numbers of 4 through 10. And so then we'll be calling add with 2 and all the numbers of 3 through 10. And on the next pass through, we will be calling x as 3 and all the numbers of 4 through 10, and then 4 and all the numbers of 5 through 10, and so on and so on and so on, until we reach a situation where this line will not be hit, and that's what breaks our recursive call. And so it has to be one of these. One of these clauses has to return true to prevent this line from running, which breaks the recursive loop, and that's our base case. And so our base case occurs when there are no other numbers in the array, so when we only have two numbers that were passed in. And in this case, those two numbers will be 9 and 10. So x will be 9, y will be 10, and then there's no other numbers, which means that we will add 9 and 10 together to get 19. And remember, we now have a stack of all these adds that we're waiting for a second argument to be evaluated. So 7, or is it 8? 8 was waiting for a return value from sum with 9 and 10 passed in. That will return, up here, 19. So now we can add 8 to 19 and we'll get 27. 27 was the value that sum and all the numbers from 8 through 10 were waiting for. So now this returns 27, we can add 7 to that which will give us 34. And then we'll have a value for the sum of all the numbers from 7 through 10, which means that we can then add 6 to that, and that will give us 40, and so on and so on, until we reach that case where we have a number to add to 1. x was 1, and the sum of every number from 2 through 10 was 54, so we can add them together and we get 55. And that's how you solve this problem recursively. So, We've described a complex problem with a very simple solution. We're only ever adding two numbers at any given time, and we express it in a very simple way. The sum of all the numbers is the same as the sum of the first number, and the, well, I should use add, because that's going to be easier to understand. The sum of all the numbers is the same as adding the first number to the sum of the rest of the numbers. So now let's <clears throat> clean up this syntax a little bit, and then we'll move on to our next example. Uh, so I like to use ternaries here because we have a bunch of ifs and uh, elses that are just calling return with no other things passed in, or no other uh, 
actions being taken. So this lends itself well to just using this ternary syntax. So this is the <clears throat> exact same logic, just a what I would consider a better syntax for expressing this in a nice, easy to read way. And we will return this guy. And let's just make sure that I didn't break anything. Good. What's it not liking here? Oh, too many spaces. There we go. Alrighty. So that's that's our first solution. Now, I basically just coded this out rapidly. And if this is your first introduction to recursion, this might feel a little bit weird. So what I would encourage you to do is <clears throat> take a words array. Uh, let's do something like uh, I know recursion. Positive affirmation is good, right? And how might you add or join all of these words together using spaces? And we solve that in a recursive way. I suggest that you take care of this now. If you can figure out how to end it with an exclamation mark, that's great too. And I'm not going to make everybody else wait. So if you are not going to solve this, or if you are going to solve this on your own, pause it. Otherwise, I will be starting my solution. In three, two, one. All right, let's solve it. So start by removing nums passing words. And instead of sum, we will call this join. Place sum with join. We need a new default value. So instead, if there were no values passed in, I think an empty string would make a lot of sense. Everything else here is going to be the same. And I will create a new add which for strings will be join with space. And I'm just going to use a template string because I think those look nicer than using string concatenation. And then we can just call join with space up here. Join with space here, and instead of sum, we're calling join. All right, and that should be all we need to do to create our recursive solution to joining all these with spaces. So let's see if I've done that correctly. Awesome. Now, I left a little suggestion to see if you could figure out how to end this with an exclamation mark. And the way you could do that is, again, I would recommend using template strings because I think they work really well, and very declarative. But you would do something like this. And if we were to run this, now it ends with an exclamation mark. So this is an important distinction to make. Why do we get an exclamation mark at the end and not after every join? So maybe you were expecting I exclamation mark, no exclamation mark, recursion exclamation mark, or I know exclamation mark, recursion exclamation mark. That's because our base case, remember that's what line 12 here is, it's our base case, only gets hit once. All the other calls are done on line 13. So line 13 recurses through the join function until join with spaces is hit, and then all the evaluations take place after that. But line 13, or line 12, excuse me, only runs one time. And then the rest of the solution is based on whatever the return value of the base case is. So if we were to replace this then with uh, I don't know, dashes, we could do that. 
And if we wanted space or er, exclamations all the time, we would have to add the exclamation mark there. And now we'll actually end up with, I think, double exclamation marks. Triple exclamation marks, isn't that exciting? So it's important to understand, like I was saying, that the base case only gets hit once. And I think this is a great way to express that that's what happens because you might be thinking that the evaluation always takes place uh, on this line, like each time we recurse, we hit this line. We don't, we only hit this line once, and then the rest of the solution occurs on line 13. So that's the basic introduction to recursion. Again, these solutions are more complex than what JavaScript would generally be built for. Uh, you would probably want to do something like a reduce uh, or even a, even a loop. Um, I would recommend probably against using loops because functional programming, but uh, still these are good expressive examples that give you the basics of what recursion allows you to do. So we'll be diving into more complex examples in the next few videos. Stay tuned for those. Like this video if you liked it. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And subscribe if you like more content like this. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.